Hey everyone, this is the first episode of Costume Chemicals, where I want to introduce you to some of the chemicals I use in my little home workshop, and show you that they're not too scary for amateurs like us to use. First, introductions, this is Polytech Easy Flow 120, it's a two-part polyurethane rotocast resin. Now, those are a lot of words, and if you're new to this, it's probably quite scary, but I want to show you just how easy this is to work with. This is about a 4 out of 10 in difficulty to work with on my arbitrary scale. I've already set up my workspace. We have a set of scales, a normal kitchen scales, just don't use them for food afterwards, a mixing vessel, which is just a disposable paper cup, a mixing stick, which is a tongue depressor, and some gloves, just normal disposable gloves. And also we have a tarp down over our workspace, that's over the table and the carpet, because this stuff, there's a good chance this stuff will go everywhere. This stuff isn't particularly nasty, so I don't use much personal protective equipment, or PPE, just being in a nice airy room, rather than needing a massive breathing mask, um, seems, to, seems to work fine, unlike some other stuff I'll show you in a future video. If you're particularly worried, best practice would probably state wearing a breathing mask, but I don't find it that bad. I'll be showing you how I use this on my Reaper mask mould, which is a silicon mould with a plaster mother mould I made at the end of last year, which I'm pretty happy with, um, but it was one of my, one of my first silicon moulds. Now, gloves on. From experience, I know how much I want to put on each layer of this mould. And I probably, and I know I want two layers to get a nice, solid mask. But when you're doing it for the first time, go a little conservative. It's, it's better to put a little bit too much in and put an extra layer on, rather than swamping your mould the first time and wasting a load of material. But then again, don't be afraid of wasting material. It's not the end of the world. Every mould you make is a learning experience, and takes an attempt or two to learn how much material is needed and the best way to cast it. Don't be afraid to fail a few times just to learn the best way to use your new mould. Since it's a two-part resin, you need to add half of one liquid and then half of the other part. For rotocasting, it doesn't matter which part A or B you add first. I don't think. When pouring the part A and B, I hold a tongue depressor just under the mouth of the bottle, which allows you to control the flow of the bottle and stops it from dripping all over the bottle itself. Once it's all in, you don't want to mix it too vigorously because you'll get air bubbles in it, but just swish it round for a swish it round for a good minute or so, just to make sure everything is evenly mixed and you're scraping everything off the walls. I've not used this mould in a while, and I massively overestimated how much resin I wanted for the first layer, not taking my own advice. Hence it gets a little messy. On my recent moulds, I actually write on the side of them in permanent marker how much how much material they take for each casting. Underestimating and adding a bit more later is much better than overestimating. So I grabbed a few spare moulds out of my cupboard to take some of the excess so I'm not wasting quite as much as I would be. Now we are rotocasting. You need to slosh it around the mould, up the walls, paying, pe paying careful attention to the very, very edges of your mould. When the first layer is going in, you're contending against surface tension, but once all the surfaces are wetted with the resin, you'll be able to build, it up, build that up slowly. Getting worried with how, uh, how much I've swamped this mould, I decant a little bit into a spare mould and after that little distraction of pouring it out, you can see just how much goopier it's gotten just having been let sit in its own heat. It's starting to drip now as we go, and it will drip, but don't worry, that's why we have a tarp down. The drops will solidify and you can spend a little time in the post production cutting and sanding them off. Once all the surfaces are covered, the plastic has stopped flowing properly, you then leave the mould to sit for a little while. For this mould, I like to leave it face up so all of the resin seeps down the walls and will build up the walls as we leave it. And now we leave it for about 45 minutes. This probably isn't the best way to do this, but it's what works for, for an amateur like me with the limited tools I have to hand. This has come out quite well. Despite all the drips, which are less than good, but you can see it's a nice solid covering over all the surfaces and they're all one solid white colour. Whilst it's still a little warm, it's still a little soft, which means you can cut the drips easily enough with a sharp knife. Also, while it's a little bit warm, the next layer will bond nicely to it. We are making this easier on ourselves by not having a fancy mould and negative mould. However, we are creating finishing work for ourselves down the road, basically trading skill and materials for time. Now we proceed to the second layer. This will bolster the strength of the casting and will use about half of what we used in the first time. So gloves on. One thing to bear in mind, this stuff you can just use the pouring resin in the dump mould. You can use it like you would any normal pouring resin and you'll just get a solid white casting so there's no need to have two totally different types of resin, at least in my experience. I'm reusing the mixing stuff on the first one since it's set already so it's unreactive enough that it doesn't affect this layer. 
Now, we're going to let it sit again. This time, I was going to let it sit face down so we could get a nice solid part for the front of the mask in the nose, around the eyes, reinforce those a bit. But because I'd added so much in the first time round, I left it face up again to allow it to drip out and create a more even surface inside. One thing to never do when you're doing a second layer of polyurethane is if you've discovered you're not putting enough resin in the first time, do not quickly mix up a second, a second batch and dump it in while the first batch is still live in the mould. Rather than invigorating the first batch, it totally ruins it and it turns the whole thing into a, a horrid gunk that will that'll congeal its way all around and make you hate resin forever. I learned this the first time I ever did a roto casting and it's a mistake I won't make again. So, half an hour later, we can now take it out of the mould. Whilst it's still fresh, you'll see it's fairly flexible and it takes about 24 hours to set properly. Make sure you don't store it in a, in a place with any pressure on any part of it or an environment that's too warm that can cause it to warp as well. Like, these also go for storing it between events and when you're not using it. But here you have a new raw resin cast from a, from a silicon mould. There is a roto cast polyurethane mask. How easy was that? I hope that cleared up some ambiguity and answered some questions you had about how hard these chemicals are to use and make you a little more likely to give it a try. Thanks and goodbye.